While Arizona's last Democratic governor has some advice for the incoming Democratic governor, just say no. During her time in office, Janet Napolitano faced the same challenges that now await Governor-elect Katie Hobbs on dealing with a Republican-controlled legislature. Team 12's political insider Bram Resnick asked Napolitano what she would tell Hobbs to do. He joins us in the studio with details. Bram? You know, a lot of voters like the kind of divided government Arizona will have in January. Democratic governor, Republican legislature. It forces both sides to be a little less partisan. Janet Napolitano says a governor's veto rejecting legislation, when used properly, can produce those bipartisan results. Hey, Governor, it's Janet Napolitano speaking. It was 2003, and Janet Napolitano was the newly elected Democratic governor of Arizona. But she had a problem. The Republicans had both houses of the legislature uh, during uh, my entire time as governor. Almost 20 years later, the next Democratic governor, Katie Hobbs, faces the same challenge, a majority Republican legislature. Napolitano's advice, just say no, a lot. She's going to have to warm up her veto pen. Napolitano estimates she vetoed about 150 pieces of legislation, but the veto wasn't the last word. Be prepared to explain to Arizonans uh, during the occasion she uses the veto, why she used it, and what the legislature can do to uh, cure it, to pass a bill that she will in fact sign. Hobbs told me she'll have no problem saying no to Republicans or Democrats. Mm -hmm. Janet Napolitano did that yep. when she was in office. Can you do that? Absolutely. But is this a recipe for stalemate in a divided state capital, doing nothing to help Arizonans? And, and let's remember that Janet Napolitano was dealing with a virtually veto-proof Republican majority back in the day. Now we're talking about two-seat margins in the House and Senate, I mean, razor thin. GOP political consultant Matt Benson says Republicans' one-vote majorities at the Capitol might open the door to deal-making. There are a couple, maybe two, maybe three members per House, per Senate, that you could see going along with the Democrat on the right issues at the right time. And our next governor and statewide officials will be sworn into office on January 2nd, just six weeks from Monday. All right, Bram, so let's talk about Carrie Lake and possibly a challenge to the election results. What can we expect from her in the next few weeks? So we've been talking about this all week, basically, mm -hmm. since the race was called for Katie Hobbs. And uh, Lake and her allies keep sending signals on social media that they are gearing up for a lawsuit. It's likely based on equipment problems at some Maricopa County vote centers on Election Day. But time is running out. There's a two-week window to file a suit if the Lake team wants to try to block the certification of the election results. Maricopa County certifies its results a week from Monday on November 28th. The state will then certify a week after that on December 5th. But a little warning here, right now, down in Cochise County, right now, the Republican-controlled county board is holding a special meeting on not certifying its results. I have no idea what happens if one county refuses to certify its results. I can't recall a situation like that ever happening, but I've been warned that this was something that could happen if the Lake Camp were to try to undermine the actual certification. Yeah. All right. So. We'll be following it. Thank yeah. you, Bram.